I've come today to Hanwell Cemetery in the west of London. Now this used to be the city of Westminster Cemetery but they sold it and then it was eventually bought by the Hanwell Council and is now the Hanwell Cemetery. On the main gates you can still see the insignia of the city of Westminster Cemetery. As we walk up the main entrance we can see two mausoleum tombs on our right one further up in fact and another two on our left. The name on this one is Jesse and Eustace Gregg. Directly opposite Florence Lizzie Mason Day 1946. The inscription on the side of this one is the mausoleum of Caroline May Keller Nee Price, wife of Alexander Keller, and she died in 1895. And beneath that we have Alexander Keller. Opposite is a very basic one, it appears to be made of simple concrete castings, and above the door is the name Martin. I've moved past those mausoleums and we come up to the large chapel in the grounds. An angel in front of the cross and the inscription reads George Oak 1847 died 1905 and his wife Esther Sarah Close by is an angel in a different pose and as we look down at the inscription beneath this one is for John Martin died 1909 aged 67 and his wife Anne who died 1922. A very clear inscription on this one and it starts with Alfred, the beloved husband of Ada Blackwell and dearly loved son of the above, who was killed in action at Arras, France, May the 3rd, 1917, while serving with the Rifle Brigade. He was 23. And then further down the stone, we have other names from the family. Annie Alice, the beloved daughter of William Charles and Anne Brown. What I liked on this one was this image at the top here with the lamb and the cross. Interesting design. The inscription is to William James Plasto of Southfield Ealing. He died in 1913. But I like the image here in presumably bronze. I've passed through the archway uh, by the Chapel of Rest and moved into the second part of the graveyard. Right in front of us, Right Honourable Henry Fitzroy, MP, second son of George the Second Lord Southampton, died 1859, aged 52. 
and then his wife, the Honourable Hannah Mayer Fitzroy, 1864. You've got to like the name on this one, Ivy L. Christmas. Ivy and Christmas always seem to go together well. This has particularly large print. It's to Ralph Callard JP of Conifer Crest Ealing, who died on his 66th birthday, 1916. And of his wife, Effie, who joined him in 1947. And here, sad to say, is the fallen angel. This one's out of area. Henry Brandon of Queensland, Australia. Born in 1845 and died here at Ealing in 1899. Very nicely engraved stone. We have the cross and then we have these lilies brought out in relief, climbing all over it. A good example of the stonemason's art. On the base of the stone, Eliza Ann Griffiths, 1935, sorry, born 1835, died 1892. George Carter gets the highest accolade, a perfect husband, a loving father. Can't be many of us that can claim to be the first one. If we look a little way down, we find also a Sid, SS Bishop, WT, RNAS, Royal Naval Air Service. Beloved grandson of the above, drowned on active service, June 1918, aged 18 years. And amongst all these multitude of designs, we can clearly pick out amongst them all one of the war graves. Private A.C. Kingston. The Queen's, November 1918, aged 18. There's a section here which is quite different from everything else. In fact, there are three sections like this. This is to Janet Camo. Alongside is Henry Camo. And then the one next to that is completely blank. We have Ernest Livingston Huey and a picture of the gentleman. Albert Cassis, another image. Lily Barber with a script I don't recognize. Bridey Leary, another blank one, and on the end we have Mae Johnston. Nearby we can see the same format, these uh, different looking graves backing onto each other, and as I mentioned there are three areas with these graves and there appear to be 16 graves in each. I've moved through the cemetery now to the far side and as you can see there are memorials, many many memorials. This has the floating angel at the top of the stone and it's for Maud Harriet the beloved and only child of E.G. and A. Priddy, 
who died in 1923, aged 22. Just along here, I've walked past six of the war graves. You see one there and one immediately in front of us. And they're all dated 1957, 58 and 59. Lieutenant John David Cunningham, Royal Artillery, February 57, age 26. Sergeant J. Wallace, Royal Artillery, 9th of February 1959, aged 45. And another from this small group, J. Carty, Royal Artillery, 16th of March 1958, aged 44. Now this is a little apart from the group and it's of a different decade but it's always doubly sad when a family loses more than one son. Sergeant J.A. Oak, the King's Royal Rifle Corps, 1947 aged 33 and then at the bottom of the stone his brother Stanley, Chief Petty Officer, Royal Navy HMS Red Mill, lost at sea, 27th of April, 1945, aged 37. All the nationalities are here. Sabignu Yan Piet, 1924 to 2003, an architect. And this one to Akub Makar Akub, 1934-2006. to 2006. In front of us now is a memorial to all the civilians who died in the city of Westminster during the Second World War. Most of that would have been from bombing, incendiary devices, and along the sides of this memorial are listed all the names. This cemetery is still very much in use. A lot of new graves here. Part way down the inscription on this memorial, Richard Willis, MA, Oxford, fifth son of the above, born 1887, lieutenant in the 9th Loyal North Lancashire Regiment, killed in action at Vimy Ridge, 1916, interred in France as they all were. Those that died in Belgium and France were not brought back home. They were buried where they fell. 
a relatively modern grave, but beautifully cared for. Geraniums planted in a, a red cross. And the inscription on the heart-shaped stone, Frank Butler, 1988, age 60, and Jean Butler, 2009, age 78. And right down at the front here, we have Alan James Butler and a little heart-shaped stone in loving memory of my dear dad, my hero. Well, that's the end of my tour of the City of Westminster Cemetery, now known as Hanwell Cemetery. There is just so much to see. I've just given you a little taster of some of the memorials that I found as I, I just wandered through. Well worth a visit, well worth spending time here and just reading all the inscriptions. Till the next time.